Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode we have Chelsea in our tactics and team guide uh, well the Premier League series really so we're going through every single team in the Premier League so if your team hasn't been done already don't worry I'll get to it soon enough um, we've covered a number of teams I think uh, kind of just doing it through alphabetical order so Arsenal, Bournemouth, Brighton, Burnley and now it's Chelsea and of course we'll go on uh, until the end basically of the Premier League so Chelsea are an interesting team to manage, of course. You, you have the uh, task of trying to uh, win the Premier League back-to-back -back, and it'll be an interesting one considering how other teams have invested in their squads. Uh, considering your squad, though, you've got a decent one all round. Um, I think it should be good enough to challenge, but you certainly need some improvements. There's a bit of deadwood lying around, a couple of players that you could possibly replace and do better with. Uh, we'll go through it one by one. So, one of the first things I like to do is actually have a look at my staff and see who I can trust in terms of judgment and ability. And it looks like Neil Barth, our head of youth development, is a good um, option for that. Uh, he should know the players in and out in truth, but we can actually have a quick look at him and see him how long he's been at the team as well, because that factors uh, his uh, judgment of the current squad players, basically. So if I have a look at his history, he's been at Chelsea since 2003, so he really should know the club in and out. So he's the perfect candidate to pick uh, to, you know, really get a good view of uh, your player's uh, ability. So another thing that I like to consider is I need 22 squad players uh, currently. Chelsea squad has 24 so you're already two over which means two of these players are definitely moving on whether it's loans going back to the under 23s sending them out properly you know actual transfers selling them that kind of business we'll see um, but yeah it's good to know at least you have the numbers and uh, then the next thing that you can consider actually just to go back for, for a second it's 22 squad, uh, squad players because you want a first 11 of leading players star players or world-class players uh, obviously according to your division other than the world-class category um, and you need a backup uh, 11 of uh, youngsters with potential who can become leading or world-class or star players uh, and that way you have a nice little balance to your team uh, you've got youngsters who are hoping for game time but aren't going to complain if they don't get it because they're all on like you know rotation uh, rotation contracts uh, or uh, youngster contracts or hot prospect contracts that sort of business um, and then you've got first teamers and they'll be you know the ones who get the majority of the game time uh, and who should hopefully get you some silverware so bearing that in mind the next thing to do is actually have a look at your best 11 so if we just do it in terms of ability everyone up until about Timo Bakayoko these 11 players here are supposed to be according to the star rating anyways uh, your 11 best players in your squad in your team so you need to try and make an 11 out of these a formation that sort of thing so just having a look here it looks like the 4-2-3-1 seems to make the most sense now there is an option of going with the 4-3-3 but I just felt like the squad doesn't necessarily have too many good defensive midfielders you'll have to invest and you kind of are set already with the 4-2-3-1 you've got players already uh, you don't need to necessarily invest and we'll talk more about that in just a second um, but yeah I mean it just kind of makes sense to go with the 4-2-3-1 I feel like I'll get the best out of everyone uh, and uh, it, it just I, th I feel like it suits the Chelsea squad but surprisingly the 3-5-2 that they play with in real life uh, doesn't actually really work for them they do have a strong depth in terms of the centre-back positions but uh, as you can see from the best 11 here it's really just uh, Rudiger and David Luiz who are the best centre backs at the squad and everyone else kind of falls under that a little bit further down here. So uh, we tried to squeeze everyone in, unfortunately Bakayoko missed out and that meant Alonso gets the nod uh, and that's, that's why, what we're working with in terms of a 4-2-3-1. So bearing that in mind we can now look at who uh, we, you know, what positions we need, uh, the players that are in there, you know we've got 24 players but does that mean we have every number needed for each position or do we have for example five right backs and no left backs that type of thing. So in terms of goalkeepers you've got two and it looks like you've got two decent ones, you've got Kota who's a leading player for most Premier League sides, a bit surprising, I thought he's a star player. Um, and you've got the backup in terms of Willy Caballero. Now see, Caballero is a bit of an option you've got to take here. He's a decent player for most Premier League sides. I, to be honest, wouldn't give him a moment's, you know, a minute of game time in truth, uh, unless Courtois actually gets injured. That we even play him in cup competitions. Unfortunately, Chelsea have just signed him for free. So the truth is, you won't be able to sign, uh, sell him off in the first season. 
you could you know you could probably try in winter but uh, you might not be able to uh, unload him there as well but if you if you could get his wages off it's not that expensive to be fair 30k and 3.3 million uh, but you'd be better off selling Caballero and bringing a youngster a young goalkeeper who could compete with Courtois who you can play in cup competitions and uh, who could eventually overtake uh, Courtois for the first team spot uh, or even could compete with him you know depending on his development really but it's just to give Courtois a bit of depth and so in case Courtois ever gets injured you do have a goalkeeper you can rely on right back still Zappa Costa and Cesar Aspilicueta. Uh, it's kind of really a strong uh, set of players in truth. You got uh, Aspilicueta who's a leading player. Definitely keep him, no issues. 27 prime years of his life. Uh, in terms of Zabacosta, Zabacosta sorry, uh, he's a good player for most Premier League sides. Now this is where you kind of have a decision to make. Uh, do you sell Zabacosta, Zabac oh my god I can't even say his name for some reason. Do you sell David? Uh, for um, you know, bringing any bringing in a youngster, a right back who's young and who can uh, you know sort of be mentored by Caesar instead, and uh, that would kind of be perfect, really, because I feel like Zab Zaba Costa um, is only a good player. I mean, you know, right backs are kind of uh, tough to find in terms of leading players. There's a rare few of them, and uh, uh, fortunately, you've got one of them. Um, but Zappa Costa, Zap, Zappa Costa <laughs> makes a decent option. Uh, he can even play as a winger if you ever needed him to. But you know we see him as a fullback. He's definitely got the defensive side of it nailed down. Um, I'd say it's it's going to be tough to sell him right now anyway. So just keep him up now for this season and see maybe uh, if uh, if you do really find a youngster, a young right back who is, seems incredible by next season. Uh, who seems like you know some a type of player that you really can't pass up on buying, uh, then maybe you could sell off David here. Um, but you know, considering you bought him for 23 million, he's only valued at 17. You would be making a loss. So it's all just about things to consider. Um, you know, also that uh, once Cesar's out of his prime years, uh, that means you know you kind of need someone ready to take over him straight away. But otherwise, uh, it's not really an area of concern to be honest. The right back spot, it's. You've got decent strength in there. In terms of the centre-backs, it's probably maybe one of the stronger areas in the squad. You've got uh, Luis and Cahill, uh, Rudiger and Christiansen, who are the first teamers. Chalobar is a Skybet League One football player, so you could definitely kick him out of your first team squad, basically. So let's send them back down to the under-18s, since he is 17. And uh, you can obviously loan him out and hope that he becomes a first teamer. But for now... Uh, the players who are going to be starting for your team regularly in terms of the centre-backs are going to be Luiz and Rudiger. It seems the most sensible partnership. Uh, Luiz is a leading player and the same can be said about Rudiger. And he's just about edged Cahill in terms of ability. Uh, Cahill himself is, I think, a leading player as well. No, apparently he's just a good player. Um, but considering his leadership and a couple of other things, he may be good to hold on to. But if you ask me... 31 years of age, you're, if you're ever going to sell him, now is the time to sell him. He's worth 12 million, he's going to drop heavily afterwards, uh, both in terms of value and ability. And uh, you might be better off uh, bringing in a youngster who can, um, you know, overtake... Uh, or just a youngster with potential, basically, like I always mentioned for all the other positions. Uh, you also do want to bear in mind, though, that Gary Cahill, if you do sell him straight away and you bring in another youngster instead of his position, uh, you have to bear in mind that, um, what's his name, is out on loan? I can't believe I forgot his name. Uh, Kurt Zuma, that's the one. Alright, so Zuma's out on loan and he is definitely good enough for your squad and he has plenty of potential. He's a leading player for most Premier League sides already. Uh, so it's just a, you should you know uh, consider your options quite carefully. Uh, another good thing to have a look at the under 23s is see who is not who's too old to be in the squad. So by the looks of it, it's Wallace, Matic, Dilak, and Eduardo. Better off selling these players. You could even move them up to the first team so you don't forget. Um, but just you know selling them, getting them off your wage budget as well uh, would be a smart idea because you know just taking up positions in your team that you don't need them to. Uh, and what does that leave us with? Back to... Alright, yeah, so centre-backs, that's kind of a, the good option. So Christian is the Christensen is the perfect type of player that I'm talking about when in, in terms of investing in a youngster who can overtake your first-teamers. So Christensen's 21 years of age, that's perfect, plenty of potential, and more importantly, he's ready for the Premier League 
already. So not only is he young and he has plenty of potential, he's ready for the division. He can definitely do a job. Uh, you don't want to be bringing in youngsters for the first team who are still just championship players. It just makes absolute no sense. Um, so yeah, like if you ever needed someone to refer to, Christiansen is the one for you. So you could definitely do that with the other position in Cahill. And once Luis starts to drop off, you could probably move him on as well. Uh, you do kind of have to be ruthless in truth when it comes to football manager. You can't do like a lot of players... Uh, or real life managers do which is just keep the player on until he decides to retire you do have to once they're you know not good enough for your team move them on um that leaves us with the left back spots now so you've got baba rahman and uh, marcus alonso so alonso is only a good player for most premier league sides the same can be said with baba rahman but he's got a bit more potential so he could possibly still become a leading player um, uh, if you ask me, you're not going to be able to set off Alonso already. Um, you know, you bought them last season. You might actually be able to, in truth, actually. Have, that's a bit of a wrong uh, call to make. You probably could sell him off now. Uh, you bought him for 23 million. He's worth 25 million, so you could make a bit of a profit, I suppose. Um, but the truth is, he's a decent backup option. And uh, you've got Baba Rahman, who could still become a leading player. So maybe just let. Once Rahman's back, you can let him overtake uh, Marcus Alonso slowly and he can become the first team at Alonso, the backup. Uh, and then you can maybe slowly decide to move on Alonso and bring in a youngster to compete with Baba Rahman. Now, your issue is that Baba Rahman is out for four to five months, which means just about maybe a little bit before the transfer window, the January transfer window. Uh, so you might want to bring in a left back who's capable of uh, playing in the Premier League uh, on loan. And uh, that way you have your numbers and you're safe in terms of the left back spot. And uh, that's kind of really it, I feel like, because uh, uh, you don't really want to sell off both. For example, Rahman still has a hint of potential of becoming a you know a leading player. So give him that chance, give him that opportunity and see where that goes. But you definitely need someone to come in and make that make the numbers up for up until January. Just sign someone on loan just for those four months or six months, is it? I can't remember. Anyways. Uh, Victor Moses is a troubling issue for you. So he's a wing back, so you can't actually play in the right back position at all. You could probably retrain him, but if you ask me, he is not suited for the position at all. Not, not does he, he doesn't only have, not only rather does he have the uh, concentration issue, but he's also very poor at marking. It's kind of basic defending, uh, so it's a bit of an area of concern. Um, and you know crossing is not too good either you could poss possibly push him up as a winger but again crossing is still an issue and uh, he cuts inside from both wings and that's not a good option for a winger who tries to stay as wide as possible so you're better off selling him off for 25 million 75k he's expected he wants his expectation is that he's a first team and in truth he doesn't fit into the first team squad at all so you're better off just selling him making some money using that to uh, invest in other areas of your squad um, it just he just doesn't suit our tactic at all and has no place in the squad either um, In terms of central midfielders, you've got Bakayoko, Fabregas, Drinkwater and Kante So what we've gone with is a Fabregas-Kante combination uh, Kante is a star player of course Fabregas is another leading player for the Premier League as well Drinkwater, just a good player You won't be able to sell him off in the first season But maybe you could try selling him off next season And bring in the youngster with potential Or of course, always refer to your under-23s and under-18s See if anyone's ever ready for Premier League action uh, You've got a ton of youngsters coming through uh, on loan, uh, from their loans uh, In the end of the season You can see if there's anyone ready um, You know, It's always a good, good thing to give them uh, an opportunity as well as so just helping with the homegrown issue uh, and that leaves you with your backups, uh, Drinkwater and Bakayoko. So we already talked about uh, Drinkwater. Bakayoko, though, is already a good player for the Premier League side as well, but he can become a leading player. So uh, definitely give him some game time. Yeah, the issue is that he expects to be a first teamer, but in truth, he really isn't. And it's a bit surprising that he's kind of expecting that at Chelsea. I know in real life, he's definitely doing really well, and he has become a first teamer quite regularly. But in truth, in this squad, uh, in FM18 at least, he's not... He's not a first team at all. Fabregas and Kante are a whole star ahead of him, just to put things in perspective. Um, and in terms of wingers, you've got William, Kennedy, uh, and uh, really you've got Pedro as well. You've got Hazard as a winger, uh, and that's kind of it. So you've got four, which is perfect because you do need four. But this is where it 
you know, it's kind of tricky. So we want to try and play William, Pedro and Hazard because they're the best wingers in the squad. So what does that leave us with? That means one of us, one of them have to play as an attacking midfielder. So that becomes Pedro. Uh, as an attacking midfielder, he's not too good. He's missing a little bit of vision. Everything else seems to be okay. He would actually do a decent job. I feel like he'd be much better as a shadow striker. The only issue is his strength, but otherwise he's got decent finishing. He places his shots, plays one twos, runs with the ball option. He's got good attributes for all round and I think he would be a decent shadow striker otherwise he really wouldn't have a place in the squad. Uh, Rodomanto would be a decent shout but the tactics that we're working with is not suited for it and um, yeah otherwise he would just not be included in the first team so we squeeze them in a little bit. William and Hazard are decent shouts as well as shadow strikers but I just feel like uh, Pedro would do that job a little bit better and he's kind of the one who's less in terms of ability. So William, we want to try and get the best out of him on the right wing. Hazard is the best out of him in the left wing. They're both better players than Pedro. And then Pedro is the one who has to kind of be sacrificed. Having said that, he is a leading player for the division. And William's the same. Hazard's probably star. No, he's world class apparently. Um, and so you've got good strength in there. The issue is in depth. So, for example, Kennedy is a championship player. So you'd be better off sending him out on loans. In fact, I'm actually going to get rid of him. Um, I'm assuming Killian Hazard is Eden Hazard's brother, but he's a Skybet League 2 player, so again, yeah, he is one of the three Hazard brothers. So you will have to send him out on loan as well, so that kind of leaves you short on numbers in terms of the wings. Um, and uh, that's Charlie Masunda there as well. I think he's not going to be ready for Premier League action either. So again, another championship player. So this is where you really need to invest in your squad. Uh, you've got Really, it's the right wing, left wing, and attacking midfield that needs improvement. Uh, just bring in all three positions, youngsters on, uh, on youngsters with potential, uh, who can eventually overtake them, and uh, you'll be good to go. Uh, Mich Michi or Michi is it? That's why. Uh, Morata, you're going to be your strikers. Morata's of course leading player for the division already, so that's perfect. And Michi Batshuayi offers a good, um, you know, a competition for the spot. He's still just a decent player, which isn't good, too pleasing to see. Apparently, he can become leading. He doesn't have too much time to become a leading player anymore. In truth, he's 23 years of age. Uh, you kind of stop in, improving once you reach 24, 25. Um, but give him a season's worth, or maybe even two, of uh, some, you know, some trust and faith because he is, a, you know, got plenty of good attributes here, uh, and um, you know, hopefully he does fulfill his potential. If not, sell him on, and uh, cut your losses really. But uh, just you have to bear something in mind with Chelsea that you don't really necessarily have to with other squads. And of course, everyone knows about the, you know, loany transfer policy, I suppose or lonely policy rather. Um, you have a bunch of youngsters who can be come back and possibly overtake into your first team. So Marco Van Jingle for Jinkel, for example, he's a good player for most Premier League sides. He will have to worry about his injuries. I never sign anyone who's, got, who's susceptible to injuries in truth, uh, but he could still become a leading player, so you might want to keep that in mind. But yeah, just having a look at a couple of these ones, they can maybe come back into your squad ready for Premier League action and uh, possibly um, play as decent backups. You've got a nice little winger here in Boga who would suit because Williams playing as a um, as a winger so he, he's a championship player but if he does return as a Premier League player then that would mean whoever you invested in as a winger uh, it would be a bit of an area of concern so another thing that you might want to consider maybe just bringing in someone on loan uh, until next season and then if the player's not ready you could just go ahead and invest again once more obviously it depends on finances which we'll have a look at in just a second but in terms of tactic this is how we're set up so let's expand this it's a 4-2-3-1 like we mentioned, trying to get the best out of all the squad players. I'm not sure why it's red like this. Did I do something wrong? I think it's because they're all out on holiday. But anyways, trying to play everyone in as much uh, comfort as possible. So Courtois is a goalkeeper, David Luiz is a ball playing defender and Rudiger is a centre defender. The reason they're a bit uncomfortable is actually because they're both stoppers. Now we can't play with stoppers, uh, two of them especially. Uh, that's very that kind of defeats the purpose. But at the same time, we are playing an offside trap. So playing uh, even just one stopper kind of defeats your purpose of playing an offside trap. We've got wing back on attack to complement Eden Hazard as an inside on, uh, forward on support, and Aspicletta as a full back on attack to complement William as a winger. Um, you could probably go with the wing back on attack as well, but wing backs are sort of uh, solo wide players. They don't really, uh, they don't really play in partnerships, that kind of thing. So full back kind of makes more sense because a winger is there. And inside forward, even though he is, you know, a left uh, winger, uh, he obviously just as the 
Roll says it's, he's an inside forward, so he cuts in a lot. That kind of leaves Marcus Alonso quite often isolated in that, this left flank. So in a sense, he is a lone wide man, and that's why we're playing a wing back on attack there. Uh, Kante as a ball-winning midfielder. Surprisingly, he's not as comfortable as he is with as a Carrillero or a box-to-box -box midfielder, but we need him as a ball-winning midfielder. He's going to play on the support duty. Fabregas is comfortable as a deep line playmaker on support. In truth, if you ask me. The better combination is playing a deep line playmaker on defend with a ball winning midfield on support. Uh, but Fabregas's positioning is quite poor. So maybe when you do play his backup, which is Drinkwater, Drinkwater is very capable as a deep line playmaker on defend duty. Uh, and maybe you can consider that otherwise, because I feel like this is a bit too attacking for my liking. But, uh, you know, just just keep that bear in mind. Maybe when you play bigger teams, you might have to play on the defensive uh duty I suppose. William Winger and uh, Hazard as an inside forward we already mentioned. Shadow striker Pedro and Morata as comfortable as ever as a complete forward on support. He's a bit better as an att on, a on attack apparently but we don't need him on that. We need him on the support uh, role and uh, he should be just as good uh, in that role uh, or in that duty I suppose. So that's kind of what you know having a look at all the roles and the player instructions all that sort of business that the whole style of play that we're going for is sort of a pass and move kind of thing. Um, that's why we're going for a control mentality. We're one of the top teams in the league, so no no real need to play on the counter-attack or any of that sort of business. Control or mentality, or if you're more comfortable, you can even go with the attacking mentality and both suit your, um, your tactics. So we're playing on structured because I think people uh, often struggle with the team shape idea, but in truth, uh, structured just kind of means that you're playing with uh, uh, your, your tactics kind of based on the player role. Um, and rather than the team instructions, I suppose. In that sense, every player has their own role to do and he has to do it himself. Uh, and, um, you know, you've got some really good players here, so it kind of makes sense to play on structured. And uh, we don't have too many team instructions. I'm just one of those managers who doesn't like too many team instructions. So it kind of made sense to just play on structured and it should give you some more defensive strength as well. Uh, you know, good team shape and whatnot. Uh, if you do love a bunch of team instructions, you can definitely go for fluid and add a couple more here. But we're just going with shorter passing, tighter marking and offside trap. Uh, shorter passing to obviously help with the pass and move sort of style that we're going for. Uh, and, um, you know, offside trap we mentioned already and a tighter marking just kind of keeps everything together, I suppose. Could definitely use these next two little slots as uh, different variations of formations. I personally don't like to do that. I like to do something like contain on one here and overload on here for whenever I need to actually go on and try and win a game or if I need to hold on to a result. Um, and that's kind of just how I go with it. Obviously, I add some more instructions depending on containment and, you know, overload. For example, like overload, I'll do... Uh, take more risks and maybe exploit flanks and so on, that sort of business. It's really down to personal preference um, and containment's the other way around, which is play even safer and take a breather. Uh, I think that's kind of it in terms of the tactics. I do just want to point some things out which the game already does, which is your area of weakness is over here. You will be heavily countered attacked in the Premier League, of course, as, especially because you're one of the top teams. But without a defensive midfielder, uh, you do have to be uh, wary of the opposition attacking midfielders who will be operating in this space, which is your weakness. So get one of these two players to man mark that player, or even both of them, to be honest. If you're asking me what's the best setup for this tactic, you're very close to it. But I would say you do want to eventually get an inside forward and a wing back on attack. Uh, to complement, you know, both sides having the same thing. William actually cuts in from the right wing. The problem is you can't play him as an inside forward because he's right footed. His natural trait though is to cut in from the wing. Uh, kind of defeats the purpose of a winger. It's a bit, um, you know, troubling in truth. But you can't really play him on the left wing because that's kind of Hazard's position. So you have an option of uh, trying to coach him to stop cutting inside from both wings. And maybe try even trying to get him to hug the line, for example. Play more as a traditional winger. Uh, but when you eventually move these players on, you can definitely... Um, bring in an actual inside forward. In terms of midfield though, the setup that I liked was a ball winning midfielder on the fend on the right here and a roaming playmaker over here. I feel that's perfect. Uh, you, you know, playing pass and move football, you need players who are sort of roaming around, uh, moving about, uh, have freedom in their movement and they're good at dribbling. So you've got a bunch of dribbling players and you've got also a shadow striker who kind of moves into the channels and whatnot. So the inside forward, even though he cuts inside, you'll have someone sort of moving there as well. Uh, I just feel like this setup is perfect. The ball in the midfielder kind of holds quite well and the roaming playmaker has an attribute which is needed of uh, good positioning. So he, he also really does drop back as well even though he's got a support duty. So I feel like this works perfectly. 
eventually working towards it, I would say play the ball playing defender with the roaming playmaker so he could find the roaming playmaker on the left too and obviously move the center defender here. Uh, the reason why I like to play a roaming playmaker on the left is actually just because only if they're right footed that means when they do take shots it's on a good side if they're over here they won't necessarily be able to take good angle shots i suppose it's really down to personal preferences it would probably still work either way uh, that's kind of it in terms of tactics so uh, we could have a look at a couple of other things some small things the scouting system has been revamped definitely improve in terms of the packages you're ready on world for both uh, never mind a lot of clubs don't actually have that so good on chelsea for that uh, you could probably improve the scouting budget, give them a bit more money, but bear in mind that takes away from your transfer budget. And in terms of that transfer budget, it's 64 million. But if you ask me, I always like to move a little bit further down into the middle, but leading towards the transfer budget. And now you have 44 million. If it's actually 60 million, 64 million, like it says there, you have about 400k, which is decent in wages, but you don't want to cut it too close. And considering you have 64 million, despite improving your squad already, well, I mean, obviously you didn't personally do it, but you know, the, the, the club actually uh, invested in the squad before you. Um, you might be better off just trying to save some money for this season at least. And uh, But you do have areas to invest in, so keep that in mind as well. 44 million though, with the, like I think you needed about three youngsters in the attacking midfield, uh, left wing and right wing positions. So you should be able to invest about 10 million in each youngster and still get away with it. Uh, but yeah, your balance is good, 137 million, projection is to have a bunch of money basically, uh, debts and loans, none at all, so you're in a very strong position with Chelsea. Youngsters to look out for, we already talked about in terms of ability, but let's actually have a look at potential players who you could maybe include in your squad. So, under 23s and under, t under 18s, you have a ton of players, I mean look at all of that, you've got... Far too many of you ask me, 82 people. So I think the under 23s and under 18s operate best when it's like the first team. So 22 players maximum. And I think even then it's a bit too much for the um, you know, under 23s and under 18s because youngsters, they need a lot of game time. Uh, and uh, to develop, of course, and at the same time, um, you know, too much competition might be not, not might not be too good. Uh, but you have to obviously bear in mind as well that some of them go out on loan. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think anyone from here up until about four stars, be you know, players to keep an eye on. A couple of them would suit your side well. Like Sterling here can actually become a winger, which you're playing with currently. Uh, Masunda is an inside forward, which suits us perfectly. You've got some centre backs here, an attacking midfielder that maybe you could retrain as a shadow striker. Uh, you've got a winger, striker, you know, a couple of positions that you can work with. You can definitely uh, maybe eventually move them on uh, into the first team. So I think that's kind of all for today's episode. We talked about who to sell, who to keep, um, you know, maybe areas that you need investing in. We've explained the tactics, why, we, uh, why we're playing with the tactics that we're playing with. And I feel like we kind of covered just about all the important bits. Uh, so I've left a Patreon in the description box, uh, a link in the description box. I'd appreciate if anyone could support, obviously, but please don't if you cannot afford it. And at the same time, um, yeah, I think that'll be all for today's episode. So if you did enjoy it, of course, please do hit the like button and subscribe for more Daily Football Manager 2018 content. And as always, guys, thank you all very, very much for watching.